Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to my home and welcome to the TEDx talk as well. I never thought that I'll be saying these two things in the same sentence. Giving a TEDx talk right from the comfort of sofa in the home? This is really a strange time. Now since you're already at my home, let's talk about an unforeseen journey. And talking just about me in my home would be rude. So let's talk about an unforeseen journey of a student, not just a student, journey of all the student who goes through an Indian education system, right from their preschool to their 12th standard. This journey is going to put up a lot of questions in your mind. Now, I'm not saying I know the answers of these questions. Neither I'm saying that I'm right, neither I'm saying I'm wrong. Figuring out answers of all of this question is responsibility on the shoulders of all of us. So figuring out answer of some of these really ambiguous question is on. Let me take you today on the journey of a student right from the preschool till the 12th standard. So let's start with the preschool. Life of a regular student in India is extremely competitive. It is so much full of competition and sometimes this student doesn't even have idea that he's even competing in the race. Whenever there is a newborn baby, the first thing that parents do is enroll their students in the preschool. Now he's competing even for the preschool. Usually principal takes interviews of these kids, these toddlers who cannot even remember their name. In the age where he should be learning from his or her grandparents or maybe his mother or father that where is your nose? Where are your eyes? What comes after two? What comes after five? In that age, that scared student is sitting in front of a chair in front of a principal to get an admission in the preschool. I don't know if it is right or not, that's your job to figure it out. But I think competition on that level, that shocks me. Somehow this student actually survives in the preschool, somehow. Don't know how they promote them, but somehow he survives. And eventually he moves into school and the standards like first, second or third, where he learns a little bit about the stuff. And this is the age where students love to play games. Why they shouldn't? It's so much fun. They asked their dad that, hey dad, I should be joining some academy like cricket because it's so much fun to play the game. And his dad sees that all of the kids and his friends' uh, kids are going into the academy. He enrolls him in the academy. Now this kid gets so much interest in the cricket that he says, hey, I want to become a cricketer. And at the exact same moment, his parent says that, hey, you shouldn't become a cricketer. You should focus more on studies. There is nothing in the sports much in India. There is so much of competition. Every guy wants to become a cricketer. And I'm sitting here thinking that if cricket is having so much of competition, haven't you ever looked in the people who are preparing for the government jobs? I'm pretty sure that is much more crowded there. And in the meantime, we are having this discussion that whether you should focus more on your cricket skills or not, at the meantime, there hits the break of the car because academy is here. Your dad on the one hand is saying that, hey, I'll pick you up from the academy back after two hours. And at the same time says, don't take this as a full time, even if you are good in that, focus more on studies. I am all about pro studies. I love studies. But in the meantime, this student moves a little bit ahead in the life. He moves into the journey of seventh grade or eighth grade, which is a very crucial age. In this age, this student get a hobby, a hobby of playing guitar. And this guitar is so much interesting that he moves his journey from becoming a cricketer to becoming a musician. And being an ambitious student, open-minded, who wants to become anything in this world, he says to his parents that I want to become a musician. And that's when you get a big lecture from your parents that, hey, there is no money in the music industry and it's not a great industry. You should rather focus on your studies. Now, if we are talking all about money, that how much money can you make actually? It wonders me that 
how much a policeman actually makes after studying so much, after giving so many of the amazing exams and the physical work and the training that they go through, how much is actually their salary? And if all that you want from your kid is to make money, here's an interesting choice of career option. Why don't you inspire your kid to become politician? Because I yet have to meet a politician who is dirt poor, just like an ordinary person. And there is minimum liability if you fail to do your work. Also, if a politician is not filthy rich, just when he gets a seat, he becomes somehow miraculously, amazingly rich. If he's not getting rich, somehow magically his uh, relatives or his son or his wife gets insanely rich. Here's a food for your thought. How about teaching your kid, hey, become a politician? Coming back onto the journey of this student, this student realizing what should I become, what should I not become, he somehow manages to go into the 10th standard. And 10th standard is a really crucial class. Everybody says that. I also got the same thing from my parents and everybody around me. Now, not every student is able to perform highly in the 10th standard. This student got just 45% marks in the 10th standard. He is promoted to the next class. Although he is super happy that I'm being promoted to the next class, but none of the society, parents and teacher is happy with him. I really don't understand. Why are you not happy with the student who is scoring 45%? This is a big question. We need to put a big why, that why are you not happy with 45%? Is it low percent? Then how is it the fault of a student that it is a low percentage? Your passing standard is 33% and he has scored way above your minimum threshold criteria. So it's you whose fault it is. The entire society should raise the standard that below 70%, nobody's gonna get pass. So if the entirety or majority of the class is gonna stay in the same standard because you don't like people with the 45%, entire class should fail. The whole idea of promoting somebody into the next class or next level or next phase is that he is ready for that. And if you think that the person with 45% marks is not ready, why to promote him? So next time when an interview asks that why you have scored less marks in the 10th, just openly say that I haven't scored less. I have scored way above the threshold. It's the standard which is really low. The criteria here is faulty, but definitely I'm not taking the side of students who are not giving their 100%. But definitely we are also equally liable and we are equally responsible to change this criteria. When the same student reaches in the 11th standard, you say to him that now you can elect your subject, you can opt your subject. Absolutely wrong. No student in India is allowed to select the stream or the subject of their choice in 11th standard. Because if somebody who has scored low and wants to choose physics and maths with that 45%, he has gonna go through the hell of all the links and all the favors that he can call through to get admission with the maths and science team, despite he is so good in that. If somebody who is scoring 95% of marks and is interested all about arts and history, he's gonna have a long lecture with the dad, with neighbors, with principal that why are you even opting for arts? You are a science student. So can you tell me how this is a selection of a subject when students are not allowed to select the subject? From now onwards, I'm gonna call this as forceful allotment of subject in 11th standard. And if you happen to be the brilliant mind, which is judged by the percentage only, you're supposed to get into IITs as well. Now the next goal from your parents is to select the IIT. Which one should you go for? not based on where are the best teachers available or where are the best projects available, but based on which college got the highest package in the newspaper, 
which student was able to bag the 1 crore package and a shift to USA. And on this exact moment, you realize that I have learned in the early school moral science book that brain drain is a problem of the country. So should I take this big amount money package and just leave the country? And then exact moment, you realize that when our talent from our country goes into another country and does extremely well there, then only we start to appreciate that. See, my point with this entire narration of journey is to point out some of the ambiguities in our parenting, in our society, in our criteria. I'm not saying that everything is absolutely wrong, but there are certainly a lot of points which are totally wrong. And they are just not wrong in the criteria. There are a lot of wrong things in the parenting as well. We are living in a society where even to sell educational products, companies need to hire entertainment celebrities and not educational celebrities because we don't have any. Society is us and we are society. It's all just a place from where you are looking. There is a lot of improvement needed and this improvement is not going to come on the very first day. But right now is the time that we need to start at least to work in the direction of that improvement. The step one to solve any problem is to recognize that there is one. Kids are highly impressionable. They are naive. They are at such a young age that they can get impressed by anybody. When they see these vlogs where these vloggers are living these lavish life and without showing them what's happening behind the scene, they just see this is the best life that one can have. It is very important for these kids to meet real life heroes as well, to policemen, to army generals and majors, and also to all these amazing entrepreneurs behind the amazing companies that they have established in India to learn more about the giants and the monstrous industries that these entrepreneurs have established in India. We have people like Tata, Adani, Ambani. I know some of you might not agree about what they do or not, but one thing is sure, they have established great empires in India. So why don't you teach to inspire them a little bit more about their stories too? They are watching a lot of YouTube. It's your parenting job to tell them more about these inspirational figures of India. Parenting means it should be free from money. Parenting means it should be high in moral values. And then only there will be good politicians coming out from our society. The politician who you blame for everything, saying that they are all corrupt and all just bad, they are coming between us. They are the part of our society and it's now our time to improve this society. And just like always, I would like to end this talk with one of my own quote. You were born alone and you're gonna die alone. Impact is the only thing that you're allowed to take with you. Rest all will be taken by others. Stay safe. Signing out, Hitesh.